Alright, C might not be a bad location. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I launched the rocket. Looking for it. I don't see it though. There it is. Oh, that is so cool. Go buzz bomb. <laughs> Quad kill, baby. All right, guys, it's time to give some Battlefield 5 closed alpha feedback. That there was the JB2, or the British equivalent of the V1 flying bomb. Those things are awesome. That's what you get as the squad leader perk. If you get 40,000 points as a squad, you can then call in one of those things and just obliterate an entire area. It's probably the most exciting thing you can do in the game right now. All right, now loading the game up on my home computer, things started off relatively well. There was a one major bug in the alpha right now, which prevents you from joining on squads. So you could be in a squad, but it'll just be by happenstance. That kind of sucks and it prevents me from uh, ex exploring a lot of the new features of Battlefield 5 since so much of them are tied into squad play. But I was able to really get into the gunplay and I gotta say the gunplay is about a thousand percent better than Battlefield 1. Seriously, it feels great. Your bullets go where you're aiming them. Except for some of the mounted uh, machine guns, the stationary machine guns, the accuracy on those kind of sucks. Um, and hopefully that can be refined a little bit to feel better down the road. But in terms of handheld weapons uh, that you're taking into battle, like this medic rifle here, your bullets go where you aim. It can be pinpoint accurate at range. And the thing that prevents you from being just a laser beam nonstop is recoil. Also, I got to hop into some aircraft. This is something that I was very curious about with Battlefield 5 because I really didn't have any time to test it out at EA Play with my own custom control setup. This time I got to refine my controls, mess around with it, test out the aircraft, and get into it. Visually, it's very cool. I gotta say from an aesthetic standpoint, seeing the BF-109 and the Spitfires go at it in dogfights is just awesome. The planes have awesome smoke trails. The explosions look cool. The destruction looks a little bit buggy, but also really cool. Planes go crashing into the ground very quickly. I like the aesthetics of it a lot. The mechanics feel clunky. The flying feels slower and less precise almost than Battlefield 1. I guess the, the speed of the aircraft is probably a little faster, but the turning rate and everything, it just feels very sluggish. Um, I haven't, I don't know if I haven't played enough to really finesse the flight mechanics yet. I haven't figured out what the optimal speed is to be at to get the best turn rate and all that sort of stuff. I'm very still green at it, but the flying controls didn't feel great in my opinion. They felt sluggish. Battlefield 1 feels more enjoyable as a flying game at this point in time. When you combine the sluggish control, the relatively low damage that aircraft do against each other, and the ability to now repair your aircraft, self-repair your aircraft while controlling it, maneuvering it, uh, means that some dogfights can just last way too long. Um, also, anti-aircraft cannons can take you out of the sky very easily because, simply put, you just won't have the maneuverability to turn away from them quickly once taking fire. Again, maybe there's some sort of magical speed or magical uh, ability that I don't know about that'll give me that, that amazing agility, but it feels crazy slow right now. So, um, wasn't 100% enjoying that. When it comes to air versus ground combat, uh, ground should rejoice at the moment because the lack of spotting makes it near impossible for the airplanes to really um, assist ground targets very much. Tanks are the only thing that are easily viewable from the air. Easily, I say moderately easy to spot from the air. But beyond that, seeing infantry is very hard. They almost have to be walking out on a really big open white patch of snow for you to have enough time to see them and line up a strafing run. I made very few strafing runs on infantry targets, which is disappointing. It was something I was looking forward to doing a lot of, and it was uh, just not really a part of the flying experience. 
I do remember having the exact same feedback for Battlefield 1 when it first launched where I said that basically ground and air wars felt, felt separate from one another. Um, and a lot of that was remedied and fixed later with different loadouts for airplanes and having more interesting combinations. And in my opinion, Battlefield 1 has some of the best air-to-air -air combat now out of any Battlefield game. So there's certainly time to change this or maybe different loadouts will change up how airplanes are going to perform versus air or versus ground. So again, alpha, and we're only looking at a limited range of the aircraft options available. When it comes to tank combat, the tanks are cool. They feel good. Um, the third person camera is janky. That's one of my, my bigger complaints about it right now. And by janky, I just mean when you're going over certain kinds of terrain, it really knocks the camera around a lot, making it hard to aim or be precise. Maybe this is by intention to try and get encourage you to uh, use first person camera more. Um, the machine guns are kind of weird. They sort of sputter out after a little while, which Certainly doesn't feel realistic, but it, it kind of keeps them in line, I think, a little bit balanced. You kind of have to almost burst fire at infantry to take them out with your machine guns. The light tank is very good. Um, it's an incredibly good solo tank. You don't have any backup. The heavier tanks feel a little bit more cumbersome and hard to move around this map specifically. But I think maybe some of the bigger, more wide open tank battle maps, the heavier tanks will really start to shine there. Um, I enjoyed playing with the tanks. They're, they're good. They're easy to get infantry kills with. If you're not smart about them, you will get uh, just absolutely obliterated by assault classes in close quarters. The limited ammo aspect of these is interesting. Um, I've already seen some people kind of exploiting it, sitting up on cliffs and just backing up to ammo and health stations and getting their ammo and health back and so that means that tank balance now is very much tied into map balance as well so if you have a tank sniper spot uh, that has great visibility and range over the entire map and all you have to do is back up 20 or 30 feet to get to a resupply station that's kind of a, almost a game-breaking mechanic in my opinion and people have already started to abuse some of that stuff on the map right now but I like the mechanics in general. It just means that we need to finesse the map design a little bit better so that people can't abuse this mechanic too much. And for the most part, you can actually get out there and do quite a bit of damage before you need to fully resupply with your tank. If you're able to push through to the next flag or capture point, there'll be another resupply station there most likely so you can get your ammo and stuff back without necessarily having to retreat every time. Now, when it comes to the attrition mechanics, I think these are some of the things that I was most concerned about with Battlefield 5, having limited ammo, health that doesn't recharge all the way, being uh, much more reliant on your squad mates. It's very hard to give accurate feedback on this when the squad system is broken. At the moment, while I was relying on random teammates or running into random people around, I gotta say, I, I didn't feel like I was being well supplied by support classes. Most of the ammo I got was off of down enemies or uh, resupply stations at flags or in between flags at crucial areas on the on the map I had to spend a lot of time running back to areas to get ammo or picking up different kits and switching guns it did feel like I was kind of constantly playing a game of scavenger or something and just having to pick up new kits and stuff um, I wasn't as crazy about this I think it hurts certain classes like the assault class a lot more than other classes um, so without having the squad system working really well or playing with an organized squad where we can coordinate better, um, I think from a ca casual perspective, the system was a bit too harsh, a little bit too punishing. And I think just upping the average ammo supply of the soldiers right now by maybe 25%, maybe 30% would make it a little bit more bearable, a little bit more palatable, increase my chances of getting to the next flag point or the next supply station without having to run back and collect ammo or pull some ballsy move where I run out into the middle of the open to switch a kit with somebody. That being said though, I do actually like the concept of the attrition system. It does make you more reliant on your teammates. You can't just be a sniper that goes off into the forest and plays for like 10 minutes out there with tons of ammo. You're gonna have to come back or work with your team or support's gonna have to come out there and resupply you. I like this to an extent. I think it's just a little too harsh right now. It does also make you more aware of map supply 
high point locations, which is cool. So better map knowledge is going to allow you to stay better equipped and better supplied in between fights or during fights. And it also adds more value to certain areas of the map because it's a supply location. You can get more rockets and ammo and it'll allow salts to engage tanks for longer periods of time. I like this mechanic a lot. I just think it needs a little bit more finesse and a slightly less punishing system to the casual or unorganized players. I get it. We want to encourage team play and organization, but there's always going to be a certain level of disorganization for the casual players and they shouldn't be punished too severely for it. The reduced 3D spotting system I thought worked excellently from the infantry perspective. Um, I never really saw any scout classes 3D spotting players, or at least I was unaware of them 3D spotting players. Also, the spotting thing for the scout class feels oddly useless because for the most part, if you have a bolt action rifle and you see a guy in the distance, you should shoot him. Don't spot him. Try and headshot him. So uh, it feels like a weird mechanic almost... Uh, to get to have to switch to an, a gadget to, to then do a 3D spot, which used to be something that you could just instantly do by hitting the Q button. Now you gotta switch, spot with the gadget, then what, switch back or something? I didn't see too many scouts using this and I was never once encouraged to do this with the scout class. But that being said, I'm fine with it. From the infantry standpoint, it's just really shitty from the piloting standpoint, not having any cues to be able to attack ground targets. Now, in general, my feedback from playing at EA Play still stands. There's a lot of visual clutter. There's still some clunky animation systems and stuff like that. But overall, I was really enjoying the gameplay. The gunplay is so much freaking better. Uh, every class feels fun to play. The guns for each class feel fun. I like the assault. I like the supports. Bren machine gun. That's really fun to use. I wasn't really crazy about the bipodded machine gun, the one that you can't ADS unless you're bipodded. I think that'll only be useful playing like defensively on some of the grand operations mode. Uh, the medic rifle is awesome. The recon class is still really fun with the bolt action car 98. Uh, going for headshots is more important now. I feel like the, the sniper uh, has more skill behind it now or requires more skill. All the classes surprisingly felt pretty well balanced from the start. I felt a good incentive to pick and switch between the different classes given different combat situations. So that's really good. It's awesome that they're bringing the class differentiation over from Battlefield 1 and the gun mechanics, man. I, if there's just one thing to take away from this is that the guns feel so much better than Battlefield 1. Uh, everything is sort of going in a great direction. I'm not going to say that everything's amazingly balanced against each other. Uh, I felt like the medic honestly had one of the best weapons for this particular map because it was just so damn accurate at medium and long range. Uh, but that being said, just everything's going in the right direction in terms of the weapon mechanics. And that was my biggest issue with Battlefield 1. Also, grenade spam felt practically non-existent, which is amazing. I'll, and explosive spam in general, despite starting this this video off with the showing that giant flying bomb coming in and blowing the crap out of guys, the explosive spam was more than manageable. It was not spammy at all. It was decent. It was tactical. Um, and I wasn't raging at my screen uh, from gas grenades and shit like that. So most of the really shitty aspects of Battlefield 1, I feel, are not carrying over into this game. And if anything, that's just a great starting place. You know, if you can cut out the worst features of BF1 and say, okay, we're starting here, that's great. Now, there, now you can only go up, right? So I'm already enjoying the gameplay significantly more than Battlefield 1. I'm going to be playing it a lot today. I'm excited about sinking even more hours into this, getting more in-depth with my feedback and sort of understanding of the game systems and game mechanics. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Battlefield 5 content, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.